The Dungeons & Dragons movie from the year 2000 seems to be best known for being terrible, but somehow it was even worse than I anticipated. With the new D&D movie, Honor Among Thieves, premiering at the end of this month, I thought, hey, I should probably watch the one that they made 20-some years ago since I've never seen it. So I rented it online and gave it a shot. $2.99? Can do. In case you haven't seen the D&D movie from the year 2000, let me give you a brief plot summary so you can follow along. Obviously, this video will contain spoilers. The movie takes place in Izmir, which is ruled by an empress who wants equality between mages and non-mages. The Council of Mages, led by the mage Profian, does not. The empress has a scepter that controls gold dragons, and Profian is trying to get another scepter that controls red dragons so he can oppose her. Meanwhile, two thieves named Ridley and Snails are thrown together with a mage named Marina and a dwarf named Elwood, who also start looking for the scepter. They proceed to complete a few intermediate quests while being pursued by Profian's henchman Damodar. Along the way, Snails is killed. Profian ends up with the scepter, and there's a big final battle scene with gold dragons and red dragons everywhere. Profian is defeated, and I guess the party gets magically teleported to go hang out with Snails' ghost or something? It's not super clear. So what was so bad about this movie? I mean, almost everything. But let's start with the fact that basically every part of the movie was poorly executed. Bad writing, bad acting, bad costumes, bad special effects. The writing is embarrassingly bad on a line-by-line -line level. Like, during the big epic conclusion, the Empress literally says, I do declare that you are now all equal. The script reads like a 12-year-old wrote it. There is just absolutely no nuance to any of it. And there are all these jokes that just don't even come close to landing. Like, when Marina catches Ridley and Snail robbing the school. Oh, so we're the, uh, uh, the cleaning crew. Cleanup crew is more like it. Oh my god. Apparently the first draft of this movie took 18 months to complete and is a product of 16 drafts. I shudder to think what the early versions looked like if this was the best they could do. And you might be thinking, well, it's a D&D movie. It isn't really about the writing. But the director is quoted as saying that he wanted to make sure this was unlike other big budget films that were more focused on effects than plot. So. This is truly their attempt at a strong plot. Yikes. There are just big, fundamental flaws in the core concepts of this movie. Like, when Ridley is facing off against Profian, at one point he's holding the scepter and about to summon the red dragons to kill him. But then he stops himself and goes, I will become you! and destroys the scepter. But then, literal minutes later, the Empress, who is a good guy, uses her scepter to command a gold dragon to eat Profian. What was the lesson? Is it evil to command dragons to eat your enemies or not? Even the whole setup with the scepters and the dragons feels overly complicated for a movie this short. Why does the Empress have to have a scepter at all? Why did Profian have to try to make his own scepter first? There's so many scepters. I don't understand why they didn't just have one scepter that controls all dragons and have everybody compete to get it. They don't even explain the difference between the different types of dragons, so it ends up feeling really silly to separate them by color. It's a basic MacGuffin plot. It does not need to be this complicated. Probably the worst writing in the whole movie is the romantic scene between Ridley and Marina. This is right after Snails died, and Ridley is really upset about it. Marina tells him that Snails died for a good cause, but Ridley is not buying that. He's really mad at Marina, because she has all this mage privilege, and doesn't understand what he and Snails have been through. Justin Whalen is acting his little heart out here, which is so depressing to watch, because the script just cannot support it. Marina then goes on to tell him, tears in her eyes, that mages aren't all bad. Not only is she one of the good ones, but so is the Empress. Ridley is the naive one here. Hashtag not all mages. Then Marina's like, oh, by the way, a few days ago, I didn't really believe commoners like you should be equal with us, but then I met you and changed my mind. There are a lot of ways that Ridley could reasonably react to this speech. Personally, I don't think making out with her is the most rational, but that sure is what he does. You know, for a mage, Pretty smart. This scene is full of overacting from both Marina and Ridley, but it is still some of the better acting here. The saddest part is, there are a bunch of great actors on cast, but none of them can figure out what to do with themselves in this movie. Poor Jeremy Irons, who has literally won an Oscar for Best Actor, is so cartoonishly bad, it's difficult to watch. Good! I can use every ounce of your rage! Bruce Payne as Demodar is not much better. Post brigades at every sewer, entrance, and exit. I want them found. 
And then there's the visuals. Neither the practical nor the digital effects are even remotely watchable. The costumes are so cheap, with only maybe three or four looking okay. Some sets and props are fine, like the eyeball room in the maze, which was practical and looked pretty good. But the red dragon scepter itself is really bad, and it's literally the most important prop in the movie. They also got to use the sed-like ossuary in Prague for Prophian's lair, which is maybe one of the coolest and most badass real-life locations you could get for a movie like this. And somehow, with the way they light it and shoot it, they managed to make it look cheap. Just such a waste. Also, I know the early 2000s were a rough time for VFX, but that's why the best movies used them sparingly. The Mummy, which came out the year before, in 1999, at least had the sense to limit the amount of digital effects that they did. This movie had almost half the budget, and for some reason attempted like 10 times the VFX. Sounds like some of this was just scope creep too. They were originally planning to have around 200 shots with VFX, and ended up with closer to 550. And I get it, some of it is necessary. Necessary. Like, you gotta have dragons, and dragons are hard. But some of it absolutely was not. It feels like their decisions about what should be practical and what should be computer generated were completely arbitrary. Like, there's a whole bit near the beginning where a bunch of dragon blood runs down the stairs and into the water. And for some reason, they did the blood digitally. And it looks terrible! There may be no cheaper, more achievable practical effect than fake blood. In the year 2000, I was doing practical fake blood effects in my camcorder home movies, and I was 10. Why? Why would you not just mix up some corn syrup? Apparently the low cost of shooting in Prague meant that an unusually high proportion of the budget, around $13 million, was able to go towards visual effects. It is painful to me to hear that, because if they had just focused that effects budget on fewer scenes, it probably would have made a huge difference. But they just crammed so many digitally enhanced scenes into this hour and a half that almost every effect looks bad. Now, I know that it's not fair to compare this to Lord of the Rings. This movie had a budget of 45 million, and Fellowship of the Ring had a budget of 93 million, so just more than double. But Fellowship came out one year after this movie, so I refuse to believe that the year 2000 just couldn't support good fantasy costuming or good fantasy effects. And this movie had a smaller cast and an hour shorter runtime. Here's the thing, campy movies can be really fun, and I think a D&D movie can afford to be campy. There are scenes where the cheesiness could have really worked if it had felt intentional. Like, this exchange is so bad, but if you imagine it being said by some 12-year-olds playing D&D in their basement, it suddenly becomes really funny. I'll invent a new destiny, especially for you, full of pain. New kinds of pain, and new senses to feel it with. Not if I kill you first. But there's absolutely nothing self-aware about this movie. It took itself too seriously, and the times when it tried to be funny, it failed. So that's my rant about why it's a bad fantasy movie, but I also have a rant about why it's a bad D&D movie. I'm not gonna dig too much into whether or not it followed the rules of D&D, because this came out the same year that 3rd edition was released, and I'm not super familiar with those mechanics or that lore. But I do know that in every edition of D&D, Dragons are supposed to be really intelligent, and the entire plot of this movie seems to be based around summoning dozens of dragons and then just making them fly around the city. There's really no recognition of dragons as anything other than weapons to be controlled, or as the elf healer tells them, sources of natural magic. They're not treated as thinking beings at all, they're just like magic danger cattle. Dragons are such a big part of D&D that they are literally 50% of the name. So it just seems weird to reduce them to their role in this movie. Even in the very beginning, when we see the only dragon who isn't under the control of a magic scepter, it gets killed by a portcullis. God, how undignified. If I were a dragon, I'd be so pissed at this movie. Some people blamed the movie being bad on it being a D&D movie. One reviewer said that the movie, quote, spends too much time being a game of Dungeons and Dragons instead of telling a story. But to me, that's the complaint of some someone who doesn't actually know anything about D&D. Because the thing is, D&D players didn't really like this movie either. A lot of us have played games that are better stories than this, and I actually think this movie did a very bad job at being a D&D game in one really crucial way. Ridley was the hero. 
singular. The central principle of D&D is that all the players get to be heroes, not just one. I cannot conceive making a movie about Dungeons and Dragons and not automatically considering it an ensemble film. But Ridley has a very obvious main character arc, and everyone else is clearly supporting cast. Some of the biggest action scenes in the movie feature Ridley acting alone. He has to do the maze in the Thieves' Guild by himself, a magic force field prevents everyone but Ridley from entering the cave where the scepter is, and even the final battle with Profian is really a one-on-one -on -one duel with Ridley. Can you imagine being the other players if this were an actual game? Imagine the DM being like, you can't enter the cave, there's a magic barrier, Ridley has to go on alone. Okay. Should we just leave? You want to just wrap up the campaign without us? And it's not just the stuff Ridley gets to do, it's the stuff the others don't get to do. The other characters get completely shafted in service of Ridley's arc. Snails basically only gets to do one impactful thing in the entire movie, and it's to die, to save Ridley. Marina, despite supposedly being a mage, only does magic once after her first scene, and otherwise spends the entire movie being a hostage, cowering while other people fight, or summoning up the courage to hit somebody on the head with a torch. Girl, you literally don't even have a cantrip? Don't even get me started on Elwood. He's barely in the movie. Look, I know I'm gonna get shit for saying this, but it cannot be ignored. This movie was just incredibly tone deaf. Marina is nothing more than a cliched damsel in distress who exists to be Ridley's reward for winning, and Snails is a racist caricature who has to die for the good cause of equality so that Ridley, the white protagonist, can be hailed as a hero. Well, I guess I better get going or I'm gonna miss my own knighting ceremony. Come on! There are 80s movies that do better than this. <sighs> what did you think about the movie? Nothing to say? I did kind of cover it. I think the big question now is, will the new movie do it better? And honestly, the bar is so low that I think even people who don't like the new movie will agree that at least it's a step up from where we were 23 years ago. But you know, I think the movie is gonna be divisive, just because everyone's experience of D&D is different. So it's impossible to make a movie that feels like D&D &D to everyone. Some people play games that are violent and morally bankrupt, and others adopt baby monsters and marry NPCs. Some people spend most of their gameplay time in combat, and others can go half a dozen sessions without fighting anyone. Because all of us get to customize our experiences at our own tables, it's hard to make something universal. I actually just saw a pre-screening of Honor Among Thieves this past weekend with my D&D party, and it felt like our game feels, and we really liked it. I thought the movie was good! I know that's not an exciting or interesting thing to say on the internet. I'd probably get a lot more clicks if I made a video called Why Honor Among Thieves Betrays the Spirit of D&D &D or something like that. And of course, I'll get called a wizard's shill for liking it because my authentic opinion is only trustworthy if I hate it, I guess. But I don't know what to say, I had a good time. It's not gonna win any Oscars or anything, but it was fun, the characters were likable, the plot was compelling, it had heart. It had enough in-jokes and nods to the game to make D&D players feel like it was made for us, but it wasn't so inside baseball that viewers who have never played will feel shut out. I predict that it will excite new interest in the game for people who have never played, and I think people will enjoy watching it, especially if you watch it with your party. Let their blood rain from Asgard!